much. It's not recording. Hello. Good morning. I'm gonna shoot in this dark mode because I hate the yellow lighting, dude. It's like pissing me off. Anyway, hi. We're in red because it's Christmas time. Christmas time. Is the backlighting too bad? Hold on. What about this? Definitely not. I'm leaving it here. I'm leaving it here. What? I look like a 14 year old boy right now. Right, this is good enough. Don't care. I wear this bracelet and it's like little beads and from time to time the beads pinch together a certain way and like pull one of my arm hairs and oh my god it feels like I'm getting sniped in the arm by like a 500 inch needle. I'm being dramatic. What should we talk about? I saw... Oh let's get ready. I have a freaking dealer. I got a new car. Outback Touring XT. It's green. So I have a dealer appointment today. So I have to go do there. I also found my mirror. I saw Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, the new Hunger Games. I don't even know if I said the title right. Last night, Tom Blythe, is that his name? I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Up there. He did a great job. He's a great actor. I also really liked, I'm so sorry, I don't know her name, the main girl, Lucy Gray, the actress. Some of the stuff she was doing was like weird. Like in one of the scenes, <laughs> she's like running in the arena and she's like running diagonal, like with a weird hunch. And I was like, you know, immediately well. no. She wasn't hurt yet, so I don't know. I really liked Spencer's part in this movie, Tigress, the cousin or whatever. Is that her name, Spencer? Or, wait, why do I feel like her name is Spencer? Hunter. Hunter Schaefer. Sorry. She did a great job. I really liked her character. So soft-spoken, but also, like, scared and also, like, strong. Very strong. Like, she did a great job. I really was impressed. Rachel Ziegler is the main girl. This is her. I'm putting up photos, probably, by the way. I don't know. Tom Blythe looks really good with white hair. And then I looked him up after. It's not hitting the same. It's not hitting the same with uh, brown hair. It's not. Not for me. Not for me, at least. He looked so good in this movie, dude. The part at the end, this might be spoilers. Don't watch if you haven't seen the movie, if you want. The part at the end where they're walking through the forest, and he's wearing, I think he's wearing like a cutoff tee or just like a really short sleeve t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Arms. Arms are giving, dude. One thing about me, I'm looking at arms. I'm looking at your wrists. I'm looking at hands. That's just me, you know. Viola Davis. She did a great job. She was freaky weird, you know? Also didn't know that his dad, Snow, whatever, um, was the creator of the games. Or like, he stole the idea, but like he gets credited along with um, Casca Highbottom, the Peter Dinklage guy. I wonder like how he died though, because they said something like, oh, you're gonna die just like your dad hung up in a tree or some something. Oh, the guy who played Plinth or Plinth or whatever. The friend who was like a humanitarian whatever and like his dad was rich dude what an annoying character bro anxiety inducing character go back home shut up i like the saying snow always lands on top like duh so now that i have watched this one i want to go back and watch the other ones just to watch snow's behavior it's just not gonna be as fun because tom blythe isn't in it is that how you say his name I'm so sorry, I don't care. Oh, that one chick who, <laughs> when they were at the zoo, her tribute stabbed her in the neck with a bottle. Oh my God, that felt so good. I was like, yep, <laughs> nothing else to it. Nothing else to it. I had a really weird dream last night. I'm not gonna say it out loud. I'm not gonna speak it because it was just super weird. But like Kylie Jenner was in it and like this one girl that I'm like, mm, was in it. And there was like a whole bunch of weird cars, like a red Bronco and like a black Lamborghini and like pool party, but not and like going from room to room dancing. I I said I wasn't gonna talk about it. You know what, let's talk about men during the holiday season. I saw a TikTok. Okay, let me try to speed explain this. Christmas, dad is filming, kids, mom, opening presents. He grabs mom's stocking. He's like, whoa, why is this one empty? Why is yours empty? He brings it over to mom, filming mom. The kids catch on, their little kids are like, yeah, mom, why is yours empty? Or something like that. And she's like laughing at the camera and I could see all the rage behind her eyes. And she's like, looks at her kids and she's like, I guess I wasn't on the nice list this year or something like that. That, I was like, Looked at the comments, every mom was like, oh my god, this happens to me every year. This is exactly what it's like being a mom right now. Like, just, I was like, noted. Hate that, but noted. Then yesterday, I go on Instagram, and a mom I follow that I know in real life, she reposted a reel of this mom standing by the fireplace, hanging up her sh a stocking, and then the caption said something like, most useless decoration for Christmas, mom's stocking. And I was like, now I'm pissed. 
now I have something to say, right? So I posted all my close friends about it because I was like, this is literally so infuriating. I really like, let me just read what I said. Moms fill everyone else's and they're the ones who do all the shopping and buying and dads don't do anything over my dead body while I have a useless, brainless, parasitic, selfish human as my life partner or husband. Am I the only one that feels that way, dude? You're getting married to a freaking bum. He's not, he can't think about you? He doesn't think about you? Hello? Bare minimum? Hello? And I said, especially because women deserve so much, like obviously if you're not useless, you're an addition to society, but nothing can and will never simulate being a woman or a mom on this earth. A man will watch those videos and he will never, never, ever, ever get it. Right? And it's not even about Christmas, and it's definitely not about gifts or stupid stocking. It's so much deeper, and that's the part that stings. I'm on mom's side always. I really feel passionate about this because one thing about me is like, I don't think that your gender is an excuse for much, especially when it comes to caring about somebody emotionally that you say you love so deeply, okay? You, we can play roles all day long, okay? Obviously there's differences between men and women, that's why we are different, we're men and we're women, okay? When it comes to how you love a partner, there is a difference between being lazy and being not lazy. And I feel like men lean back into the laziness and they are just allowed to do that because wives obviously love them and like care for them, like whatever. Women, the way women love is different than the way men love. But it does not mean that women should just be brushed under the rug. I don't even know how to explain what I'm trying to say. If you are a husband, you should be looking out for your wife at all times, all times. You should be watching what she's doing, watching what she's not doing, covering bases that she's not covering. Women do a lot, especially if they're moms, especially if they're moms. I personally will never ever get married to somebody that I cannot do everything with. That's the whole point. You're choosing a life partner. You're not choosing a husband and a wife. You're choosing a life partner that is the important part that you partner in everything like what I'm not gonna do is have kids and then be shopping out for Christmas by myself coming home filling the stockings by myself like we can figure out a time to do it together the thing is you have to want to do it together the dad has to want to do those things. I feel fury for moms who accept that type of love. Quotations with my middle finger. It's so heartbreaking, dude. And like thousands and thousands of comments on that video saying, oh, this is me every year, this is me. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just stab myself so hard, so hard, so hard in the eye. Ow. I can't see. Oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. <laughs> Holy cow. Jesus, I feel like I stabbed my cornea. I'm all worked up, it's 7 a.m. I need to chill. You know what I'll do every year? I'm the friend that asks, are we doing gifts? I will ask every single person in my life, are we doing gifts? If the answer is no, I am so happy. If the answer is yes, I got some work to do, but I'm also happy. Because like one of my biggest things is like, if my friend ever got me a gift and I didn't think to get her a gift, I'm not surviving that. I'm not surviving that guilt and emotion. I'm not surviving that. So one thing about me is I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna be asking. Hey, are we doing gifts? Are we doing gifts this year? Hey, are we doing gifts? Does anyone know if we're doing gifts this year? Also, why does my nose look so wide this morning? I believe in the practicality and usefulness of a gift. I don't believe in buying something just to buy something. I know I'm not the only one, but after movies like The Hunger Games or like any type of adrenaline filled situation, I'm like vibrating with unreleased adrenaline after the movie theater. On the walk to the car, I'm literally shaking. I cannot stop it. My whole back is tight. I normally do not like watching movies like that because they're like nightmare fuel for me. But The Hunger Games is like, you can't not see it. You can't not see it, especially in theaters, especially if Tom Blythe is literally the main character. Going back to the Christmas dad thing. One of my friends, when I posted that on my close friends, she was like, is so-and-so her partner on your close friends? He needs to see this LOL. Bro, we're 20. We're 20 and you know that he's this type, girl. Just heartbreaking. Cause like for me, it's like all my friends deserve the best. If their partner is not doing everything to make sure they are happy, cozy, comfy, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. It doesn't take much to make sure somebody's happy. It doesn't take much to make sure they're comfy, cozy, loved. Love the soundtrack for uh, Ballad of Songbird, whatever. Love Olivia Rodrigo's song, really good. I also was a little bit concerned about the music aspect of the Hunger Games movie. Cause I was like, Hunger Games movie and music? You know, besides the soundtrack, I was like, hmm, it might be corny, might be corny. Wasn't corny. Also, spoiler again, I thought Lucy Gray was gonna die. I'm very happy she didn't. 